Happy Doomer. Hello, guys. So George Lucas was invited to the 2024 Cannes Film Festival as an honorary awardee to say a few words, and the interview with him has turned into a quite interesting roughly 20 minutes of story time. It wasn't highly advertised on most platforms, so it seems like most people missed out on it, which I intended to change with this upload. Before we start, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons, and please consider visiting my Patreon page and signing up to support my work for as little as $5 a month as I receive no income at all from my videos. In turn, you'll receive nice perks like having your name or brand displayed on my videos or requesting custom content. You will find the link in the description. Anyway, now enjoy the show. Two years ago, when we brought THX, he did all the sound and I did all the editing, and we wrote the screenplay together. And uh, it's quite an experience to be back here. Okay, let's start with this. Let's start with this can and, uh, and the homage you made you getting this year with a, with a Palme d'Or, an Ori Palme d'Or. Uh, just what does that mean for you? What does can mean for you? Uh, what does this mean for me? It's being in Cannes getting uh, the homage and the Palme d'Or. Well, it's uh, uh, nostalgic, but it's also a great honor because, you know, I've obviously been back a few times before with Indiana Jones and Star Wars and whatnot, but uh, it's always great to be recognized. You know, I, obviously we have a lot of fans and all that kind of stuff, but in terms of awards and stuff, it's, you know, it's, uh, I don't make the kind of movies that win awards. <laughs> That's the thing, I mean, uh, I want to go back in time, uh, and I want to start with uh, uh, your friend Steven Spielberg movie, uh, The Fatherlands. In The Fatherlands, there is a scene where the young Steven remembers that he fell in love with cinema watching The Greatest Show on Earth. Is there a moment like that for you as a kid? Is the movie or a scene, something you've seen, that made you say, I want to make movies now? Uh, well, when I started out, I, I didn't do that well in high school, so I went to junior college for a couple of years and mostly studied uh, anthropology and social sciences, and I fell in love with that. Uh, before that time, I did try to go to an art school and learn to be an illustrator, and I was a, you know, I did a lot of photography. I went in a dark room and I did that a lot. So, uh, a friend of mine was 
going to go take the test to go to USC. He was a business major uh, that I grew up with. And he said, oh, come with me. And, you know, I don't want to drive all the way up to Sacramento. And, uh, they didn't have SATs in those days. So I said, OK, I'll do it. And uh, I went. And lo and behold, I passed the test. <laughs> and I said, well, what am I going to take that? I don't know what they have in the anthropology department. And he said, well, they have a photography department. And you love photography. I said, OK, well, I'll put that down as my major. And, uh, but it wasn't, I got there, and it was not a photography department. It was a cinema department where they made movies. I said, this is nuts. You go to college to make movies? <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, in those days, you know, the USC has been around since the 20s, and uh, there were only like a few dozen film schools at that point. And, uh, but I got there and uh, took a history class and an animation class, and then I had to make a lot of other, you know, science and language and all that stuff. But I fell in love with it immediately. It was like, that was the moment I said, this is for me. I love this. So that was, because I didn't know, you know, I come from a small town in central California, a, a, a rural, you know, farming community, and we didn't get foreign films or anything. We just, you know, we had two theaters. One was a B movie theater, that's Roger Corman films, and an A movie theater, which had all the Hollywood films. And uh, on weekends, once I could drive, I would drive to San Francisco and see more avant-garde films with the Kenyan Cinema, which was uh, up there. And the people who were making these offbeat kind of art films. And uh, I said, that's what I want to do. So I went to uh, film school, and uh, I made what would be considered then sort of tone poems or art films or whatever. But they didn't have a, they didn't have a, uh, uh, you know, they, they, the, the stories, but it was very, just a film about motion and a film about uh, that sort of thing. And I, you know, that's what I wanted to do. And so that's what I did when I was in school. And then, uh, but I was very successful at it. There were student films, uh, student film festivals. Uh, and uh, I started winning lots and lots of awards. So, um, and I made one which was uh, like a 15 minute film called THX 1138. And I was, and the first film I made was an animated film called Look at Life, and that won a gazillion awards. And I just said, I love this. And I was, you know, became kind of a, a hero in the department because I could do this stuff. So it's, uh, from there, I won a couple of scholarships. And then I met Francis Coppola, who was directing uh, Finning the Rainbow. And I was just a student observer. And I was bored to death. I said, I don't want to make Hollywood movies. I don't want to, you know, I know how to do this. I was already had another scholarship with Columbia, with Carl Foreman. And I said, you know, I've seen how they make me. I'm not interested. And he said, well, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to go over to the animation department and uh, see if I can get a couple short ends. There was nobody there. The studio had closed down completely and had been sold to Seven Arts. The day I arrived was the day that uh, uh, Jack Warner was leaving. So he was walking out as I was walking in. And you know, it was deserted. Usually, with these scholarships, you'd say, well, what department would you want to be in? Oh, I'd like to write screenplays, or I'd like to be the camera, or, and they'd give you that. But there wasn't anything there. So they stuck me over there with Francis, and uh, he said, you look awfully bored. I said, I am bored. I'm going to go over to the animation department. And uh, he said, well, wait, 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 wait. Stay here. I'll give you something to do, uh, and uh, it won't be that boring. So I knew we were the only two people on the crew that was uh, you know, under 60 years old. We both had beards, we both went to film schools. So we were a completely different group than the crew and everybody. So yeah. that was my moment. Yeah. And from then on, I was Francis's assistant, and then I moved on. 
But at the same, at this time, <clears throat> sorry, not only at USC, but in this, uh, in this period, you created a group that will change Hollywood, American cinema, and cinema forever. Uh, you, uh, by, by the way, Paul Schrader was here uh, last week with a movie, and he published on the internet a photo of you, Francis, and, uh, and Paul, and he said uh, about can together again. Uh, this group that we created uh, is what we call the New Hollywood. Uh, do you realize, did you realize at the time that you guys were changing everything, every world, that you were proving to the studios that we can be independent and still make movies that we can make money? Well, to be very honest with you, we weren't really that interested in making money. We were interested in making movies. That was a big difference, because we all loved movies. That was the same thing at USC Film School. You couldn't get into the movie business. It just was not possible. You were, unless you were a relative or you knew somebody and they pushed you in there, you, could, you couldn't go to the studios. It was just completely locked out. So none of us really thought we were ever going to make movies. And even our, our uh, camera instructor, he would, we came in and he said, how many of you guys want to make films? Everybody raised their hands up. None of you are going to get make films. That's, the, that's about as far as you're going to get. So if you want to make films, this is a hopeless exercise, and you're going to waste two years and forget it. So uh, we, uh, but the secret was that we all loved movies, and all we really wanted to do was make movies, even if they were just short films at school. And uh, that was a magic time in Hollywood which is where USC is, where the uh, people who founded Hollywood and founded the studios, they were all retiring because this was in the mid-60s. And in the 60s, they were all in their mid-70s, their 80s, and they were leaving. And so the studios were bought up by companies like Coca-Cola and, and Gulf Western and you know, regular corporations, and they said, well, what do we do now? You know, we don't know how to make movies. And they said, well, let's, you know, so let's hire some agents and people that know how to make movies. But basically, they hired a lot of kids. And we, so where we couldn't get in before, they started hiring people from film schools. Like, they must know what they're doing. <laughs> Little did they know. Uh, and uh, so, after uh, Finian's Rainbow, uh, Francis wanted to do a, a movie, a little movie, and he, we outfitted a truck and he went to uh, around, we were going to go around the country, he was going to shoot this movie, he had a script, but he didn't, we didn't have any locations, we didn't have anything, he just, it was like 12 people, it was a very small movie. And so we get in the truck and we drive across the country, starting in, in uh, Great Neck, New York, and going all across the country, and then we'd stop, the art department would go ahead and say, I found a good location for this scene, let's do that. And uh, so, in the end, we ended up in Ogallala, Nebraska, in a warehouse where we were shooting some of the final scenes for the movie. And Francis said, well, what are you going to do after we finish this? I said, well, I'm going to go to San Francisco. I'm going back to where I came from. And I'm going to make uh, Kenyan cinema kind of movies, you know, non-story movies. And uh, he said, well, stick with me. Uh, you know, write a script for the movie you want to do. And uh, I'll try to get it made. I said, okay. Little did I know that I was getting paid what they gave him for me to write the script in order for me to be the catch-all assistant on the movie. Uh, but that's uh, really how I got into it. And then I, when I, I went to San Francisco, Francis said, I'm going to come to San Francisco too. We'll start a company in San Francisco. And so... It's American Zotro. American Zotro. And, uh, you know, there were a few other film companies and filmers, people, Phil Kaufman was up there, John Cordy was up there, uh, Saul Zance was up there. Uh, and so, you know, I wasn't completely 
uh, a void. And we said, we're going to be here. We don't want to go to Los Angeles. We don't want to be part of that. It's just not what we want. So we started making films in San Francisco. And that gave us the freedom to pretty much do whatever we wanted until I actually made THX and it didn't make any money. And then they said, oh, you owe us a lot of money. I said, well, I thought that was development fund. No, we don't want the movies. We wrote seven screenplays. And they said, we don't want the screenplays, we don't want the movies, we don't want any of that. We want our money back. <laughs> well, for instance, I was thinking, oh my God, we don't have that kind of money. And uh, I said, uh, he said, well, I, there's this movie uh, about Italians. And, you know, I, they're going to pay me a lot of money to do it, and that'll get us out of hawk. I said, okay, well, what can I do? And he said, Look, if you want to make a movie, don't make one of these artsy, uh, sci-fi whatevers. Make a, a comedy. I dare you to make a comedy. I said, well, I'm only 25 years old. I can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> so I started writing American Graffiti. And uh, so... Uh, Is it true that you signed for American Graffiti here in Cannes when you were presenting a THX? Well, what I've done is I gone to every studio in town. My agent got me uh, in the front door. I got the front door. They said, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, don't call us, we'll call you. So, you know, that happened forever. And, uh, but uh, in those days, United Artists was like the pick of the studios in terms of being able to have some freedom and being able to do things. Uh, but I talked to the senior vice president there and he said, no, no, that's not what we want. So, Walter and I, uh, we, well, we got the in, we, uh, Warbo has told us, hey, you're going to be in the director's fortnight and, uh, at Cannes. So, well, that's great. You know, it's like we could barely get the film released, let alone in a film festival. So, uh, they said, well, we're not going to pay for you to go to Canada. It's like, you know, if you were getting the Palme d'Or or something, then maybe we would, but you're just in the director's fortnight. That's just first time directors. We don't care about that. So, uh, Walter and I got together and said, well, let's just take what money we have left. I, I didn't have that much. He didn't have that much either. Hmm. And we said, let's go to Cannes and see the movie. So we did. We came to Cannes. It was raining like crazy. And, uh, we found the theater. It wasn't in a regular theater. It was in one of these side theaters. It's small, you know, about the size of one of these sections. And uh, got to see the movie. We snuck in. We didn't have tickets. We didn't have anything. <laughs> uh, we just, you know, went in. And uh, then uh, it wasn't until really only a couple of years ago when I was here with uh, Star Wars that. Uh, I went to a press conference and they, one of the press got, got up and said, listen, why, when you, THX, why didn't you come to the press conference that we had for you? I said, I didn't know there was one. <laughs> I didn't one. We didn't know there was a press conference. Uh, but that was that. <laughs> <laughs> We remember about this film, but uh, uh, the car chase was impressive, the car, the, the race was impressive, uh, and it's not the only car chase or race that you have in your films. Uh, you're kind of obsessed with speed in movies. I mean, you're the guy who put speed in space with, uh, with, with Star Wars, and there was, since you were a student, there was this uh, short movie called uh, 14208 that was uh, uh, a race, a guy running around a, uh, a circuit, and why is that? Why are you so... so Obsessed like that, like cars and, and speed. When I, when I was in high school, I was obsessed with cars, and I would cruise every night, like in American graffiti. And uh, so, uh, and I did race, I did what we call in, in the United States Jim Cannons, which is autocrosses, usually in the parking lots. Uh, but they have cones, and you get to race, and I had a car, and I raced. Uh, and uh, I worked in a foreign car service and worked on cars, Renaults actually. And uh, so I was very much into racing. 
And my first thing was, well, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be, I'm going to drive race cars. Uh, then I was in a really bad accident, like a week before graduation from high school, and uh, was in the hospital and all that stuff. But that's where I kind of came to realize that I wasn't that good a driver. And in racing, if you're not that good a driver, it's better not to do it. <laughs> so even though I loved it, and then so what I did is I became a photographer. I was in a sports car club, and we had some racers and stuff. So I did that for a while, and then when I went to USC, I could sort of continue that. Uh, but I sort of given up. Once I got to film, I said, "This is it for me. I don't want to be a race driver anymore." Uh, but uh, it was, it's always been, I've always been fascinated with it. I always love it. I love racing. I uh, have done it, you know, I went back after uh, a number of years and picked it up again with, uh, you know, on a real racetrack. And then uh, uh, kind of decided that. Well, I did some celebrity races, and I also did some other things. But I, you know, but then uh, those around me, I had by that time uh, been divorced and had uh, I had one daughter, but then I adopted two more daughters. But I, I adopt, we adopted the first one, so I knew how to do it. So you know, and they all, you know, I came close to it. You know, go behind something and there'll be a big explosion and uh, you know everything oh my god and you know but i would you know i park because the car that blew up was not me but i realized that all the people around me were just saying please don't do this you know yes you might not die but you also might be crippled for the rest of your life and you've got three kids to watch after um, and you're the only one they've got because i was a single dad and so I thought, ah, okay. <laughs> and uh, so then uh, I got, you know, obviously I was uh, starting to really make movies by then. I was, start, I was doing Star Wars and stuff, so it's like I said, okay, I don't have time for this anyway. Find somebody that knows how to make movies, has a story to tell, is passionate about it, and makes the movie. You don't ask uh, the housekeepers whether they liked the movie, really. I mean, I love the house. There's Francis let uh, anybody come and see his cuts of some of the movies he did. And I said, Francis, they're not going to understand this movie. It's just not going to be something they understand. And uh, But he would listen to anybody. He still does. <laughs> <laughs> Monsieur Lucas, merci beaucoup. So that was about it. Thanks for watching, and make sure to also watch my other videos.